Would the father have been able to say that to Solomon, what shall I give you if Solomon wasn't sowing? No. So sowing, it brings forth the plan of God that's hidden. The plan of God that requires seeking. The plan of God that requires effort. The plan of God that requires honor. If Solomon did not sow like that, God was not going to ask him, what shall I give you? And that is a phenomenal meditation that everybody must look at. Because there are some things that God is not saying because sowing is not going on in a person's life. Why was Solomon so special out of David's sons? Why was he so special? What was the secret behind Solomon? His sowing anointing. That was the only differentiating factor. David had sons and daughters. He had children all around. But the differentiating factor was Solomon was a cheerful giver. The cheerful giving is what solidified Solomon's future, not the plan of God. It wasn't the plan of God that solidified his future. It was his sowing that solidified the future. Because if he does not sow, God does not reveal this plan to give him wealth and riches. God will not reveal this plan. Of what shall I give you? Is being influenced by his soul. You have parts of your life right now that it will not be revealed to you what God has planned concerning that if you're not a soul. You won't even know. You'll live your whole life, you won't know. Saints, the truth of the matter is a lot of people wonder how does discernment work? Discernment works through sowing. God can't even tell you about people for real, for real until you start sowing because God will unfold that intimate conversation with you and tell you stuff that you don't even recognize about a person. You'll be looking at a person and say, they're so nice, and God will tell you, do you know that person is depressed? They're evil. No, no, they're nice. They're kind. You'll meet somebody inside of a store. And they say, oh, oh, I'll give you 30% off. And God will tell you, that's my enemy right there. And you're looking at the 30% off. You don't know. That's not the evidence of who the person is. That's who they is right now while you standing up smelling good in front of them. If you go tell them you believe the prophet, you, ah! They're like, hey, wait, wait, wait. What about that 30%? Ah! Is another person come out. You say that person, you know Jesus is Lord. Ah! Is another person come out. Saints, do you know oftentimes you meet people, you're not meeting them as who they are. You're meeting them in a certain theme. So think about it. You meeting somebody in a certain theme is not who they are. It's who they are in that theme. Says, you know how many times people was living next to somebody and the person looked so put together and they found out that the person had body parts inside their house. The person was killing people and locking them up inside of that house. And the person walked out, looked normal, looked calm, cool, collected. Hey, how you doing? How you doing? And, and you all know that's a serial killer right there. So God start talking to you for real, for real, through sowing. Solomon was not going to have God reveal that plan if he wasn't sowing. And then remember this, when God start teaching you things, you have to look and say, well, how many things 
Does God actually want to teach me that I haven't learned yet? Do you know sometimes you look at yourself and you say, well, I didn't know I was supposed to do it like that. And God tells you, do it like this. Well, think about it. There's a million other things that God has that same approach to you about. And you don't know it and won't know it until you seek him and you sow into him. If you take it up, write this down. Sowing into God is the restoration of the living soul. When God made man, he made him a living soul, which means that the man will understand what God is saying. The man was an interpreter. When God made man a living soul, he made the man to comprehend communication. So think about this. This is so profound. When God made man a living soul, he made the man to be able to dissect the word of the Lord. That the man will know what the spirit is saying. The man had an ear to hear. And that was the only information that would sit inside of the man. The man had no interest. The living soul does not have 1% disinterest in God. It's completely in adoration, worship, fascination, obedience, readiness, cooperation, willingness, love, perfect love, peace, joy, holiness, consecration, concentration, sanctification, illumination. It's full of light. See, so, so think about this. What causes the man to be a living soul? God has blessed him. And the blessing means that his mind only has the activity of the Spirit of God. His mind doesn't have no activity of jealousy, anger, greed, lust, fear, anxiety, stress, worry, uh, self-condemnation, guilt, shame, witchcraft, rebellion, competition. It has none of those things inside of it. The living soul is a carrier of God's schedule. And it is a carrier of God's righteousness. The way that he wants things to be done is in the living soul. And God blessed Adam, gave him a living soul. Now here's the amazing thing. Adam left the living soul and operated in a dead soul. But God did not stop raising up more people after Adam to walk in the living soul. Because Abram walked in the living soul. That's why when God is telling him, your wife laughed, he's revealing to Abram, this is not what a living soul will do in response to me. If Sarah is mocking what I just said, that's not the behavior and the traits of a living soul. When God rebukes Abram for trying to negotiate Sodom and Gomorrah, he's showing him how to operate in the living soul. See, sometimes when you are trying to even fight with God about people and how they, Lord, you need to do this, but Lord, I don't know, you don't even understand that you step into a place where you're not in the living soul no more. So you're being terrorized by somebody that's not even doing God right, and you up there praying about them, oh, blah, 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 and you up there going bombarding God with all type of petitions about them, and that person don't even have no no fruit. And you leave the living soul for dead soul people. That happens a lot, by the way. That's why many people, they, they, they enter into a breach in prayer. Because they start praying for people and start going to God in a way about people. And the person that they're going to God about has a dead soul. And they have to step out of the living soul to do what they're doing in prayer about that person. Because the living soul will give them clarity and wisdom and rebuke them 
and bring alignment and arrangements so that they will comprehend the heart of God towards the matter. So saints, if you take it up, write this down. Sowing is the restoration of the living soul. And sowing is how God places the blessing of his abilities more manifest within an individual. So when a person is sowing, God will actually give you more discernment about a moment. You won't be tricked by people. You'll recognize things faster because your soul is in a living state. And when your soul is in a living state, it can hear God talking very quickly, very precisely, and very swiftly so that you don't be deceived. The thief is after everybody's life when you come into the earth. And the only way that you could have victory over the thief, you can't even bind the thief without sowing. Because the thief came with another system of life other than sowing. So saints, think about this. How many billionaires that come into earth, millionaires come into the earth, how do they become billionaires and millionaires? Not by God's divine anointing of sowing. So Satan has created another system. The thief advertises a system that competes with sowing. And guess what? The opposite to sowing is sin. So Satan makes the covenant of riches with people that will sin higher than others. Just think about it. If the person is selling drugs, they're sinning higher than others because they're, they're actually giving somebody a supply of something that could kill them. They're sinning higher. All sin is not at the same level. The book of 1 John said that there's a sin that leadeth to death. And I tell you not to pray for this person. It talks about a sin that leadeth to death. First John, wait a minute, wait a minute. There's a sin that leads to death. What does that really mean? So there's sins that don't lead to death? Yes. Right now, if you're inside of a store, God Tell, tell you, pick that can up that you just dropped and you don't pick the can up. That's not a sin that leads to death. Meaning, God not going to kill you because you didn't pick up that can. But there are sins that lead to death. That's why I said, touch not my anointing one, do my prophet no harm. You, 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 you bother somebody that God has anointed as a prophet, you play with fire. And do them no harm don't mean don't attack their ministry. It means don't even disturb their observation. Because the word harm in the Hebrew means to affect. The definitions is mean that you are bringing disturbance, grievance. So if the prophet is getting grieved by you, that's what the word was saying too. Do my prophet no harm. Meaning don't even let their soul be grieved by your life. Let them not have heartache looking at you. Let them not be saddened by your obedience to your flesh and to the will of Satan. Don't harm them. If they love on you and they treat you with respect and they treat you with dignity and they raise the standard, don't let them be harmed. That's another spin to do my property no harm. Many people don't see that. Micaiah was harmed by the king. The king said, feed him the bread of affliction. But God made sure that that king got killed days after. You know why? Because he was harming the prophet. The prophet was going to suffer because of that king's hatred. The prophet was going to suffer because of that king's agreement with the will of Satan. 
And God cut that king off. Did you know that that king went inside of a battle? And he dressed up like, like the same way um, he dressed up in a costume. He acted like he wasn't the king. And did you know that when he got inside the battle, they left everybody. And you know what they did? They passed all the other soldiers and they killed him while he was in the disguise. That's some scary stuff. No, no, no. Do you understand when somebody disguised themselves? They, they put on a, a, a fake garment, a fake face. Uh, they put on fake stuff. He was in a fake attire. And while he was in a fake attire, they still found him. They didn't fight no other soldiers that was in the battle. They ran past them. Imagine seeing a whole army run past all the soldiers and the soldiers looking at them like, wait, wait, wait. Oh. But there were soldiers ready to dagger them and then they recognized where well, they running. And they all swarmed him. That just sentenced Micaiah, the prophet, into jail and said, feed him hunger, beat him, harm him. And God moved everybody to bypass all the soldiers to get him. That's why um, when, um, when, when I was uh, placed in Dr. Mike Reddock's life, I knew that the place that I was to play in his life was to heal him. And he calls me his healer. That's how he refers to me. He calls me his healer. Publicly, privately, he calls me his healer. When you operate as a healer, that means that you have overcome the serpent. The serpent and the thief are all elements. They are all dimensions where there is an impartation of dishonor given to everybody. And both the serpent, both the thief are snatchers of people's destiny. Adam wasn't supposed to be outside of the garden. So when he's outside of the garden, his destiny is snatched. The blessing, the living soul, it worketh by sowing. You have to sow to operate in the living soul. And the more that you sow, the more that you understand. You know, I've noticed something. For years I've been sowing money, seed, into the word of God. I noticed something. I've been studying something. If you're not intentional about the transaction of the money seed that you sowed, you won't get the transaction in completion. Uh, did you know that your card could have money on it and you could use it at a certain machine and your card could be canceled. And did you know sometimes your bank will shut down your card because they say it's fraud? But in other cases, did you know that your card could just mess up simply because the system of that machine is blocking the transaction that has happened? And so the teller will tell you, pick the card in one more time because the system shut down. Look at this. Everybody's soul is a system. If you sow and you let the system of your soul get shut down, the transaction of the seed is not being complete. It's being interrupted. It's being canceled. You got to plug your soul into the spirit of God again, the word of God again. So that what you sold for will manifest. If you sow a seed and you say, I sow to overcome iniquity in my heart. And you don't overcome iniquity in your heart. Understand what's going on. The transaction is being canceled. 
So what's going on with the system of how you are thinking, operating, meditating, pondering? What's going on with your system? Is it really set up correct? What is the system of your schedule? What is the system of your eye gates? What are you watching with your eyes? What is the system of your conversations? Who is able to talk to you on your phone? Whose compliments do you desire? Whose acceptance do you crave? All of these things are a part of whether the transaction can be completed. You could sow seed, and the purpose of the seed is to transfer a transaction, impartation to you while you're sowing, and the, the impartation never stick. Okay, so tell me something. Didn't Solomon sow for wisdom? God is asking him, what do you name the seed? I want wisdom and understanding. Did he not get the wisdom and understanding or not? Y yes, he did. So he got the wisdom and understanding. Why do people so for wisdom and understanding and still stupid? Solomon's system was not operating as, okay, I'm going to just go and I'm going to focus on who I want. I'm going to look at this person. I'm going to look here. I'm going to go here. I'm going to go there. I'm going to do this. Solomon remained a seeker of the presence of God. Solomon prayed. If you remember when they dedicated the house, who was praying? Solomon. Solomon was sowing and praying. Chronicles chapter 7. Sowing and praying. So he does not stop seeking God. So what he names the seed happens for him. It don't happen for everybody. Even though it's supposed to happen. Because their system is being shut down. And since what is everybody's major system? Where is it at? Here. Your brain. Your brain. Your brain is the major system that you have. That's why the Bible says, don't be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Your brain is the major thing. Ephesians, uh, I think, Ephesians, what did I say? It said be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Being renewed in the spirit of your mind. Your mind has a spirit realm connected to it. It's either in the spirit realm of, of the Holy Ghost or it's in the spirit realm of unclean spirits, demons, fallen angels, principalities and powers. And if your system is bad, you come back the name of your seed. You fight it off. It's, when you name your seed, it's supposed to happen. So saints, for now on, remember this. Everything I name my seed is able to get to me by sanctification. Sanctification is my arms grabbing the package of what I named the seed. <sighs> Sanctification. Sanctification is my unwillingness to be corrupted. Let me show you something. I think that's in First Peter. I think that's in First Peter. I think that's in First Peter. Sanctification. 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 Sanctification is you protecting the atmosphere for harvests to land. And sanctification is you proving to God that you are serious about your seed name. 
God can look at you and see that you're not really looking for what you name the seed. Because how you ask me for wisdom and that you're around fools? How you ask me for freedom and you're around people that empower your bondage? How you ask me for, 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 for deliverance and you're around people that have chains around their neck? That's who you have called your company. You ask me to open your eyes, but you are in association with blind people that love being blind. God looks at everybody's sanctification system and he knows whether or not you want to be wealthy. He knows whether or not you want houses and lands in the hundred folk. He knows if you want harvests by your sanctification. Why? Is you not isolating this part of yourself away from the world? Why does the world connect? Why does the world can have ties with you? I, I want to take you to the scripture real quick. I want you to see this, and this is so amazing. This is so amazing. I want to take you here. Take you here real quick. Look at 1 Peter chapter 3. Let's go to verse 15. Look what it says right here. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. I don't even want to read nothing else. What does it say? Sanctify the Lord God. In your hearts. Wait, 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 wait. How do I sanctify the Lord God in my heart? Remember I told you your heart is your lifestyle. Your heart is your lifestyle. When it says sanctify the Lord God in your heart, that means don't let the lifestyle of the Holy Ghost not be able to come out of you. Don't stop it. Don't quench the spirit. Don't affect his schedule, his mood, his theme, his dream, his plan. An evil person is a person that blocks the traveling of the Spirit of God. They block it. The Spirit of God said, I want you to go over here, I want you to go. And they say, no, 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 that goes against what I want. I don't want that though. And they block it. People that say that they love God, hate God. Because they block the travel route of the Spirit. The Spirit say, I, 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 want, I, want, I want you here. I want you here. No, I want to be here. I'd rather be here. And saints, the Bible says, sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. That means don't let that well of information that he gives unto you to be affected by evil. Don't let something opposite to that well take root in you and direct you. Sanctify the Lord God in your heart means when you receive the word of the Lord for your life and you don't complete the word of the Lord, you heard what the Spirit had to say to you. You know what the Spirit said and you live opposite to it. It means you're an evil person. That's why people like to disguise themselves with church going and singing in the choir and preaching the word. They like holding Bible studies and prayer groups and they like hooking up with other religious folks so in their mind they can say, according to my works I'm saved, according to my works I'm delivered. But let me, let me show you something. All those things will not matter if you didn't complete the word of the Lord for your life. That's why I told you, people are going to hell for obeying the word of God. Didn't the Pharisees obey the law? They said to pray. They prayed. But that wasn't the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord was to love their neighbor as themselves. The word of the Lord was to stop judging. The word of the Lord was to receive the Messiah. And they didn't receive the Messiah. But they still did what the word said in, in other brackets. Okay, I'm going to pray. 
Okay, I'm going to gather together with the saints. That's what they did according to their brain to convince themselves that they were saved. But the thing that the word of the Lord spoke, they fought against it. They heard Jesus is the son of God. No, he's not. He's blasphemer. That's the word of the Lord. No, no, it's not the word of the Lord. It's a blasphemer. Anybody that follows this, is, is, is they're, they're, they're listening to Satan. They're tricked. This is the son of God. No, this is not God's son. This is a lie. We are all children of Abraham. We are all children of Abraham. Jesus looked at them and said, if you are children of Abraham, Abraham rejoiced at my coming and you desire to kill me. Imagine people tell Jesus about their salvation all the time. I've been saved for years. You looking at Jesus telling Jesus that you've been saved for years as if Jesus is not the author and the finisher of your faith. They're looking at Jesus in his face and saying, do you know we are children of Abraham? When the word of God says in Galatians that only in Christ Jesus are you the children of Abraham. But they were telling Jesus, you know we the children of Abraham. You can't tell us nothing. We got a covenant with God. You can't tell us nothing. Saints, this will happen when you're not sorry. When you're not sowing into the spirit, you're crazy. If you take notes, write this down. Sowing into my God-assigned man of God places the heaven of salvation upon my brain to prevent satanic attacks on my mind. When I'm sowing into my God-assigned man of God, I take my head out of the presence of principalities. I take my brain out of the covenant of unclean spirits. Saints, look at this here. Sowing is also a technology that God has given to man so that you will not engage the insanity that God that, that the God of this world has scheduled for your brain. The God of this world wants to bring an insanity on all people. Sowing is you placing on the helmet of salvation, the armor of God, to be delivered mentally from satanic attacks. But that's how people get attacked in their brain all the time. They get tormented. Let me tell you something. Outside of the will of God is torment. And I promise you, anybody that leaves the will of God for their life, they always got to be around people. They don't want to be by themselves. You know why? Because torment doesn't like solo. Torment likes to be occupied. Torment likes to be always doing something. A tormented person can't sit down and spend time with the Lord in quietness. They can't do it. Even if they say they spend time with God, you know what, going, you know what they're going to do? That's, it. That's how they operate. That's how tormented people operate. Even when they say that they're seeking God, that's how they seek God. They seek God like that. Just like that. That's how they seek God. They don't seek God with quietness. And still, they seek God like this. They, they, they seek God like this. They seek God like this. The music all around them. They, they surround themselves with Christian music. Music all around. They always talk. That's how they operate. A tormented person can't be still. A tormented person can't be still and know that I'm God. They can't be still. Martha couldn't be still because she was tormented. She wasn't who Jesus created her to be. And Jesus gave her favor. Jesus gave her peace. Jesus gave her pleasure. Jesus gave her happiness. And she rejected it all and said, no, I need to stick to my schedule. I know how to be saved. 
I know how to serve God. I know how to be ready for the coming of the Lord. I'm preparing for the coming of the Lord. Miss Bojangles didn't understand that the Lord had already come right before her. All that she was doing was so unnecessary, but she couldn't catch it. Because it wasn't about Jesus, it was about her. Did you know the mystery behind tradition? Tradition is not about Jesus. Tradition is about you proclaiming your own righteousness. Because in tradition, God will come to you with the true word of the Lord. But you'll stick to tradition because you really don't want the Lord. You want the tradition. Because if you wanted the Lord, you would let him tell you. That's why the Bible said Jesus was telling them, you search the scriptures thinking that you find me. But you can't find me even reading the Bible. You can't find me going to church. You can't find me singing in the choir. You can't find me praying in prayer groups. You can't find me like that. I have to make myself known to you. Look at John 14. Let me show you. Let me show you. When you're sowing, it means that you're tired of being stupid. A sower is a person that's fed up with deception. Nobody could sow if you are okay with being mediocre. You can't sow if you're okay with following generational witchcraft. You can't sow. You want generational witchcraft or generational wealth? You want generational wickedness or generational wisdom? You want generational uh, uh, works of darkness or generational true worship? You, get, you can't sow. Let me show you something. Let's go to John 14. Look what it says, verse 21. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them. What, what does this mean? He that hath the word of the Lord. Look what it says. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them. What does that mean? He that hath the word of the Lord and keepeth the word of the Lord. He that hath the word of the Lord and keeps the word of the Lord. He, he it is that loveth me. And he shall be loved of my father. And I will love him. And guess what it says? I will manifest myself to him. You see what the text said? The Lord said, I will manifest myself to him. You can't find me the way that you want to find me. I'm going to look at whether or not you're following the word of the Lord. If the word of the Lord is being kept by you. And you know, why did it say keep my commandments? Because God going to give you the word of the Lord and then he going to give you time to exude faithfulness towards the word of the Lord. And he going to study to see, did you keep my word? He not just going to manifest. And that's how a lot of people act like, they act like God has manifested to me already. Yeah, 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 yeah. But what in your life has been the word of the Lord where God can investigate that you have been faithful to that word. What in your life has been the word of the Lord that God can say, okay, I told you to do this. You have done it for six months. You have done it for three years. You have done it for two years. You've done it for a year and a half. You've done it for two months. What in your life is God able to document that he gave you the word of the Lord about and you have exuded faithfulness towards this thing? He don't manifest to you until he can do the investigation and see that the investigation is that you are keeping the commandment. And look what he said. He it is that loveth me. So God looks at, do you really love me? You say it, but do you really love me? And what have you documented of my word in your fruit? And for how long have you documented? This is all the process that God goes through. He looks at to see if you're faithful to the word of the Lord. Then he looks at to see if you truly love him. And then he looks at, now I manifest. 
So people haven't been faithful to the word. People haven't been faithful to the commandment. The word of Lord on their life, they struggle to do it. And then they, in their mind, they believe that the Lord has manifested to them. Deception. 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 Saints, you ever listen to, have you ever met somebody that said that they preach? You listen to them Bojangles trying to dissect, dissect the scripture. You see how confused you is. Have you ever met somebody that said that they preach? You have a conversation with them about scripture and you see how they take you here and there and they can't explain themselves. Them Bojangles can't comprehend nothing that they even telling you. They'll get confused about what they're saying. What? Huh? What? Huh? What? What? You wonder who be sending people to preach and teach because it take you forever. And then it says, you know there's other people that when they when they when they go to teach and you don't understand what they're saying, they try to make it look like you slow and they just super deep. No. That ain't the problem. I ain't the problem. Who sent you to teach? Who? The yoke is easy. The burden is light. Rightly divided the word is a grace. It's a grace. And it's a grace to those that are sent. And says, I'm going to tell you like this. Everybody's been called to be a teacher. Everybody. Everybody's been called to be a teacher. And if you can't articulate the anointed of God, that means the evil is still inside of you. Evil makes you illiterate. Evil makes you not be able to read God. Evil takes you away from godliness. An evil person is somebody that's chasing their imagination and the vision that came from the enemy. They're not chasing the Lord. Because an evil person has no intent to please God with their life. They have every intent to accomplish their own pleasures. An evil person is not focused on the Lord. They're focused on themselves. Evil people do not pursue the will of God. They pursue the will of their imagination. They pursue. That's what they're after. I see myself like this, and this is how I'm going to be. The Bible said, don't think of yourself more highly than you are. A lot of people think of themselves more highly than they are. They think that they should be like this. And you're not qualified for that. That's not who you are. God don't look at you like that. Find out how God looks at you. Find out how God sees you. You know, I want me a Rolls Royce. God be looking at you, how you deal with the place that you live in. You know, I want, I want me a Rolls Royce. And so I'm, I'm showing you something. Some people in their mind, they're like, I want a Rolls Royce. And God be looking at how you deal with the place you live at. You don't even wash the walls. You don't even wash the floor. You don't even take care of the vehicle that you do have now. You don't even take care of what you currently have. But in your mind, I want a Rolls Royce. That's what I want. But do you have Rolls Royce excellency in operation right now? Do you? Are you dealing with everything that you have in your possession today as if you're grateful, as if you're thankful, as if you're, you're, you, you are grateful to God about it? Are you doing that? 
Many people are so quick, they want to go higher and higher and higher. And where you're at, you are low while you're there. So you want God to raise the conditions of your outside, but you haven't raised the conditions of your inside. 